Oh boy, a live-action adaptation of The Tick. This is going to be great. It was a huge hit as a Saturday morning cartoon show. They've got Bed Edlin and Patrick Warburton and Barry Sonnenfeld. There's no way this is going to fail. the yin to villainy's malevolent yang. Destiny has chosen us. Wicked men, you face the dick. Even in a world full of superheroes, none are like the tick. Possessing physical strength beyond that of ten men, but also possessing the intelligence of a small child, the Tick arrives in the big city looking for a proper challenge for his abilities. Once there, he meets up with Arthur, a former accountant with dreams of superherodom in a flight suit, but not much self-confidence. The Tick, who pretty much exudes confidence, decides that he's going to move into Arthur's apartment and the two are going to team up to form a great superhero duo, whether Arthur wants to or not. Together with their new friends Captain Liberty, an ultra-American, ultra-feminist hero of the government, and Batman Well, a cowardly skirt-chasing egomaniac, the group teams up to battle the forces of villainy, the trials of superhero life in the big city, and their own mistakes and poor choices along the way. Yes, truly, there is no other superhero quite like the Tick, but we're probably better for that. The series was created and run by writer-producer Ben Edlund, who also created the cult comic book series that began the franchise and the Saturday morning cartoon which popularized it. Outside of the Tick franchise, Edlund is also a writer and producer for the shows Supernatural, Angel, and Firefly, among others. Other notable producers include Barry Sonnenfeld, who directed the Addams Family movie, the Men in Black movie, and produced the TV show Pushing Daisies. Larry Charles, who's written for Seinfeld, Mad About You, Curb Your Enthusiasm, and Entourage. And David Sachs, who was a producer and writer for The Simpsons, Third Rock from the Sun, Malcolm in the Middle, and Murphy Brown. The casting for this show is equally incredible, each actor managing to add a necessary cartoony flavor to their voice and mannerisms to help sell the absurd situations, but also able to flesh out what could have easily been a group of stock characters. But the clear scene stealer out of a cast of scene stealers is Patrick Warburton as the titular Tick himself, who manages to give enough confidence into the character's insane ramblings that you actually get swept up in his words until you stop and think for a minute and realize nothing he said has made any sense whatsoever. Isn't the most important call the one we make to that party line of the collective unconscious, that string of mysterious arbitrary digits that we add up on our mental abacus and call us? We call us, and who answers? We do. What the hell did he just say? Do I know? The best way I could summarize the show's tone and humor would be as a weird but oddly effective cross of the comic book Watchmen and the TV series Seinfeld. Like Watchmen, the show's ultimate message seems to be that superheroes in the real world just don't mix. However, whereas the former used the premise to explore the darker, more cynical ramifications of the superhero ideologies, the Tick uses it more for satire, presenting superhero tropes in a world where they don't belong. This is touched upon in my personal favorite episode, The License, where we learn that all superheroes belong to a bureaucratic government organization, but is the focal point of The Tick vs. Justice, where we see The Tick struggle to get a villain he caught prosecuted. I'm afraid the evidence is inadmissible. It's like it doesn't exist. But it's right there! I do not want to have to speak to you again. Well, I don't want to have to speak to you again either! The Seinfeldian aspects come from the characters themselves, who are all rather pathetic and sad in their own way. While the show indicates that at least the Tick and Captain Liberty are moderately good superheroes, most of the show takes place between battles and we see that they are all poor excuses for people behind the costumes. Apparently superheroes are just a bunch of egotistical, self-centered, sexually frustrated kindergartners. No offense intended. None comprehended. The characters are all flawed and at times reprehensible people, but the show also takes time to highlight their good points. The characters' hearts are usually in the right place, and even at their harshest comments, they have a real camaraderie between each other. This helps make the darker humor more palatable without removing the edge. The broadness of the humor and incredible campiness may turn people off, but if broad satire works for you, then the show will be perfect. And even if it isn't, I have a feeling that the show's genuine charm might bring you in anyway. Either way, 
I'd recommend it. The Tick originally aired on Fox, and you should probably get used to me saying the words aired on Fox a lot, because I have a feeling those will become more frequent as the show goes on. Anyway, all nine episodes have been released on DVD through Sony Picture Entertainment, and the show has been put online by Crackle, and can be watched on their website, YouTube page, or Hulu+. Plus mostly. For some reason, the episode The Funeral has not been released online in any legal fashion. At least, not of this recording and not that I could find. But, if you want to try before you buy, you can watch all eight other episodes and consider The Funeral as a bonus for buying the DVD. Whether a superhero fan or just someone who enjoys laughing, you cannot go wrong with The Tick. Check it out or suffer the unprecedented wrath of Apocalypse Cow.